Okay, guys, these are these are notes on a the topic is absolute value equations. So um, a couple little couple little pointers before we before I get into any of the actual equations. Um, so the question here says, can you think of two numbers on a number line that are the same distance from zero? So um, two numbers are on a number line that are the same distance from zero. Um, so that's fairly simple. It's numbers like 1 and negative 1. They're the same distance from 0. Or 2 and negative 2. 5 and negative 5. Um, that's kind of what absolute value means. Absolute value means, um, like, I'm going to go ahead and go to this here. Um, these little lines mean absolute value. If you see them, you say absolute value of x in this case. Um, absolute value of x equals 7. So what this is saying is whatever's inside of the absolute value is 7 spaces away from 0. Um, meaning that um, this might be a 7, right? Because 7 is 7 units from 0. But it might be a negative 7 because negative 7 is still 7 units away from 0. It's like a distance. Like 7 and negative 7 are the same distance from 0. So... Um, Either 7 or negative 7 could be what's in here, and, and then, you know, the number always comes out positive for an absolute value. So there's a couple ideas with absolute value. The first idea is this. This is more the main idea that you're going to have to understand. Whatever's inside an absolute value equals this distance from 0, let's say. So in this case, um, x is 5 spaces from 0. So then I have to understand that x could be 5, like in this case, right? 5 is 5 spaces from 0, but you know what? Negative 5 is also 5 spaces from 0. So, so again, you, you got to understand with these variables in here, um, it's saying whatever number's in here is 5 feet, or, you know, the distance from 0 is 5 units, so that could be 5 or negative 5. Now you have this other idea where it's the same concept, but it could get tricky if it's just a number inside the absolute value. Remember, it's kind of asking you, well, how far, right? What is the distance from zero on a number line, for example? So five, right? Absolute value of five is, you know, it's five units away from zero. But the same thing here, the absolute value of negative five is still five because um, even though it's a negative number, its absolute value, again, is basically a distance from zero. So even though the number's negative, it's still five units away from zero. So you have this concept of um, absolute value is a distance from zero, right? So if, if the distance from zero is five, then maybe this x is a five, but maybe it's a negative five. And then, you know, within that same concept, it's the same thing. It's what's the distance from zero for these numbers. So, um, you know, the distance from zero is still five units, whether it's five or negative five. So, so again, absolute value is the distance from zero on a number line. And, and we ultimately get, um, you know, distance is kind of like a positive value. So... That doesn't mean x is always going to be a positive number, but the absolute value itself has to equal a positive. And then you have this instruction here to solve absolute value, value equations. We isolate the absolute value, then split it into two equations. So we rewrite two equations. Um, one is positive and one is negative. So, um, so you see here an example. Um, the absolute value is by itself. Once you have the absolute value by itself, or if it already is by itself, you can rewrite your equations one positive in this case one will equal positive eight and one of the equations equals negative eight so um, so like i could solve both of these right and be like plus three um so x might be a whoops x might be 11 but i'm gonna add three again to solve solving is the same step but then the two equations will have different answers negative eight plus three is negative 5. So in this problem, the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 8. Um, x might be 11, but it might be negative 5, right? 11 minus 3 is 8, so the absolute value of 8 is 8. When you plug in a negative 5, negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8, but remember negative 8 is still 8 spaces away from 0. So again, if you have a negative 8 um, in the absolute value, it comes out positive. So um, 
going to go on to this problem down here. Um, so here's my advice on absolute value equations. Isolate the absolute value. Isolate. I know you had some instructions um, right here also, but I kind of want to reiterate the um, instructions in a slightly different manner. First, you want to isolate the absolute value. So that means here, like, if you subtract 5, right? Because you want this thing by itself, right? This thing with the vertical lines, if you want to call them that. Um, it's called absolute value, right? You want it by itself. So isolate the absolute value. In this case, I subtract 5. And then I get the absolute value of x is um, 11 minus 5 is 6. And, and then I'm going to rewrite that once I have... So I have this acronym I, R, right? There's the I, there's the R. Um, rewrite as two equations. One positive and one negative, right? On, on their own, these may not make sense, but in the context of doing the problem, this is what it means, right? Once I have the absolute value by itself, which it is, I rewrite two equations, one positive, one negative. In this case, x equals 6 and x equals negative 6. There is a third step here, solve both equations and get two answers, right? So um, once in a while, you'll see certain type of things pop up with absolute value patterns like this, where the answers are opposites. The answers aren't always opposites in, a, in an absolute value problem, but sometimes they are. Um, like, look at this one. Isolate the absolute value. I have to get the absolute value isolated. So I'm going to divide by 3 on this one. When I divide by 3, by the way, if you, if you distribute here, if you multiply the 3 into the x, it's going to come out wrong. So um, you can't distribute into absolute value. But anyhow, I'm going to divide by 3, and I have, whoops, I have the absolute value of x, not x, but the absolute value of x by itself, 15 divided by 3 is 5. Once I have the absolute value isolated, I'm going to rewrite two equations, 1 equal to positive, and 1 equal to negative, in this case 5, and negative 5. So don't, don't let these problems fool you, the answers are not always opposites. Um, moving on to this one, get the absolute value by itself by adding 3. Isolate the absolute value by adding 3. Um, 9 plus 3 is 12. Now I have, again, look at the absolute value means this thing. Once it's all by itself on one side of the equation, it's isolated. You're ready to rewrite as two equations. So um, remember the concept here is it's basically saying this, whatever's in the absolute value is 12 spaces from 0. So that means that x plus 2 equals 12, but x plus 2 also equals negative 12 because, again, whatever's in here is 12 spaces from 0. So whatever's in here, x plus 2, that is, is 12. It's also negative 12 because both of those numbers are 12 spaces from 0. And then solving, um, I would just subtract 2 here. And I'm out of space there, but 12 minus 2 would give me x equals 10. And then I'll subtract 2 here, and um, that would give me x equals negative 14. So my two answers here, you could write them just separate like that and box them. That's fine. If you want to write it as um, this, you can also x equals 10, comma, negative 14. That would also show me that x has two possible solutions. Um, again, here I have to isolate the absolute value, so I'm going to subtract 4 to get the absolute value isolated. Um, 14 minus 4 is 10, and um, now that the absolute value is isolated, remember, right, two equations, one positive, so 2x equals 10, and one negative, so 2x equals negative 10. Again, following that concept that um, once you have an absolute value isolated and it equals a number, right, you have to understand that whatever's in here, 2x in this case, is 10 spaces from 0, right? If 2x is 10 spaces from 0, then 2x equals 10, but 2x also equals negative 10, right? Those both 10 and negative 10 are 10 spaces from 0. So divide by 2 here, right? 10 divided by 2 is going to give me x equals 5. Here, when I divide by 2, I get x equals negative 5. So there's my two answers for that one.
I'm going to go ahead and uh, solve this one. Look at this one. The absolute value is already by itself. You don't have to isolate the absolute value if it's already isolated. So um, once it's isolated, you rewrite your two equations. One positive and one negative. 5x plus 10 equals negative 35. And um, now I can solve both and get my two answers. Subtract 10. And 5x equals 25. Divide by 5. And, oops, on there. Um, and so x equals 5 on this one. And, and if you notice with the absolute value equations, once you write two equations, you... Um, you do end up solving the equations with the same steps. I'm going to subtract 10 and divide by 5. Same thing on this one, except different answer. So when I subtract 10, I'll get 5x equals negative 45, and divide by 5, and I'll get x equals negative 9. So, so you see from some of these that, um, yes, sometimes absolute value equations have two answers that are opposites, like 5 and negative 5, or 6 and negative 6, but not always, right? 10 and negative 14, 5 and negative 9. So sometimes the, sometimes the answers are opposites and sometimes they're not. Um, these next few problems here, same thing, guys. Isolate, right? Isolate, rewrite, solve. Um, without writing down the entire um, step, isolate, right? Because you get the, you isolate the absolute value. Rewrite, because you rewrite your equations, one, oops, one positive, one negative, right? Um, and then solve, right? Solve both equations. So the acronym is IRS. It's used for solving absolute value equations. You isolate the absolute value. You rewrite two equations, one positive, one negative. You solve both equations. So here I'm going to have to add 4 to isolate the absolute value. Um, 6 plus 4 is 10. Now the absolute value is isolated, so... Um, Remember, x is 10 spaces from 0, so that means x is 10, and x is also negative 10, because they're both 10 spaces away from 0 on a number line. Next, um, I'm going to subtract 5 on this one, and 2 times the absolute value of x equals, right, 5 is gone, 17 minus 5 is 12, just isolating the absolute value still, so I'm going to divide by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6, so now I have the absolute value of x equals 6. Um, absolute value is isolated, so I'm ready to rewrite my two equations. One positive, one negative. So there's that one. So you see the way these problems end is it's not always the same. Sometimes when I finish writing both equations, I have no work left, right? These, whoops. Um, these two problems, when I wrote the two equations, it was basically just giving me the two answers already. There was no more work to do. But, um, but some of them, right, some of them I'll have to keep solving once I write the two equations, like the next one. Notice the next one, the absolute value is already isolated. I don't have to isolate the absolute value, but I do have to rewrite it because whatever's inside this absolute value is 13 spaces or 13 units from zero, right? The distance from zero is 13, meaning x minus 7 equals 13, and x minus 7 also equals negative 13. So solve both of those, right? Add 7 and get x equals 20. On this one, when you add 7, negative 13 plus 7 should give us a negative 6. So 20 and negative 6 are your two answers. If you think about this, 20 minus 7 is 13. Absolute value of 13 is 13, and if you plug in a negative 6, negative 6 minus 7 is negative 13, but the absolute value of negative 13 is positive 13. So I know some of those words get a little tricky to listen to, but um, ultimately you can definitely understand this concept, and you just need to try your best to make that happen. So um, I'm isolating the absolute value here by adding 8. Um, 18 plus 8 is 26. Um, absolute value is isolated now, so x plus 6 equals 26, and x plus 6 equals negative 26. So I'm um, just going to subtract 6 on both sides to solve both of these. Um, 26 minus 6 is 20, and negative 26 minus 6 is negative 32. These last